Well, good morning, everybody. And uh, today's report's going to be a little lighter than normal for my Friday. Uh, I got in about 5.30 this morning after that drive. And uh, so we're going to get a video out to you showing the latest updates, and then I'm going to get some uh, other things caught up today. But the picture you've been looking at here was sent to me by Randy at the Red River Farm no uh, Network uh, in North Dakota. And uh, beautiful picture, Randy. I really appreciate you texting me this this morning. You're looking here at what we call Undulatus aspiratus. And that's the, the name we've given for this cloud that's uh, kind of a wave-like cloud that kind of rolls along here uh, just underneath what probably was a pretty good storm complex that was in the vicinity. If you had a video of this, you'd actually see these moving like a wave, almost like on the ocean. In fact, that's the restoring force in making these waves, uh, gravity. So it's pretty amazing to, to see this. So thanks for sending that. The cloud field that Randy shot that picture is right up here and this is a pretty important look here at the setup this morning so we just kind of watched the sunrise today what we're going to be taking a look at here are some of the big storms that are rolling through parts of North Carolina desperately needed rain into this area we need to ask ourselves where this little wave that's coming kind of trapped between a larger ridge here uh, and there's actually high pressure on the on the eastern side of this as well and how this moisture is going to be coming in through this particular area. I want to really focus on that just a second. We also still have some air quality issues out in the West United States. Again, yesterday we were watching that fire in, in this part of, um, of California. So let's do this first. Uh, this morning's radar, this is just a, a long running uh, animation uh, here. It's, it's, it's a full six hours of, of rainfall and this is what we're watching. See, these were the rain, uh, the rain that came through parts of North Dakota into Minnesota last night. We're gonna see where this is gonna be heading here in the next uh, 24 to 36 hours. Meanwhile, here's that heavy rain moving through parts of North Carolina. Absolutely love seeing this. And if we just add it all up through eight o'clock this morning, this is our last two days worth of rainfall. So like we discussed last night, we did bring in some much needed rain into this part of Iowa. And again, we're kind of pushing out uh, the really humid air that has been in place here very soon with some much drier air. So to be able to tap into a little bit more of that today, bringing in rain into this area is gonna be critical. Our southwest monsoon is going to continue to do what it's doing, but it is going to actually help support better moisture. I'm excited to show you these morning model runs coming through some dry parts here of Iowa and Nebraska. We'll get to that in a second. But just to get the setup for it, this is the last 14 days of precipitation anomalies, the new updated map this morning. So to see the rainfall that could move through some dry areas in through here, I'm talking about Indiana, this pocket right in through there, is going to be good. We're getting some precipitation in through here, which we desperately need. And as you're going to see in the forecast, we're going to be bringing some rainfall into parts of the dry uh, dry regions here in, in Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, and Iowa. Okay, so uh, new data to talk about here. This is this morning's high-res NAM model. Let's take a look at the next 60 hours or so, which will get us through the weekend. So this is live. Uh, bring us up to speed here. You've got the scattered storms in the southeast through the mid-Atlantic, and we're going to keep an eye on this thunderstorm complex moving out of Minnesota into Wisconsin this afternoon. Now what you see is getting into the overnight hours tonight and then working our way through Saturday. So this is pulling through Saturday morning into Saturday afternoon and evening. A couple of things I'm watching here that will just give us an update from last night. Better chances of rain through Wisconsin, uh, really central Wisconsin, eastern Wisconsin getting through Michigan. And then on Saturday night, this could be interesting, we could be watching pockets throughout northern Illinois uh, and southern Wisconsin seeing better chances for some strong to severe storms. And those could push into Indiana in the overnight hours. Now, this is an area that really needs this rainfall, all right? In addition to that, take a look at what's going on in the tail end of this front. I took you back in time here to early Saturday morning. We kind of mentioned the models were flirting with kind of developing a bit of a low circulation here uh, coming into coastal Texas, delivering some rainfall. And they're still kind of hinting at something like that, hitting some very dry land down in parts of Texas. Now, this is just the first part, but let's go in and add it up. So this morning's high-res uh, uh, NAM model, let's just see its total precipitation through. We're going to stop it here Sunday uh, midday. Desperately needed rainfall in this area. Same thing through here, and we're going to watch what comes into Texas. That's just the first part. The second part is shown in the new updates uh, for the precipitation anomalies from the European um, operational run here, and then this would be the um, ensemble. So what I'm watching very carefully is right in through here, and the, maybe the slight changes in the position of some of that heavy rainfall coming very soon. I'll show you the timing of it in just a second. You already saw this. We've seen some of this rainfall coming into this area, and we're gonna be watching for changes as you get into week two, shown over here, where the pattern becomes very highly amplified with a large ridge building, uh, building excuse me, into Western Canada and a broader trough over the east, leaving that lingering frontal boundary here on which we're gonna feed in some moisture. So that's gonna be an interesting uh, factor to watch here for week two, again, the 19th through the 25th. So let's go take a look at it with, uh, with the European model. So we've already seen through Sunday midday, so right about here. 
So let's pick up and watch how the precipitation early next week on Monday and Tuesday, see it right there, comes out of Colorado and Wyoming and then pours over here on uh, Monday afternoon and evening into this area. While that's occurring, there is going to be this weak coastal feature that just sits here in the mid-Atlantic delivering some rainfall and some scattered storms in New England, which, are, which is dry as well. And as we play this through, let's just rock back and forth. This is Monday, Tuesday into Wednesday. There's that storm complex we're going to have to pay very close attention to next week. Now, that's just the beginning of some of the drier and cooler air setting up by next week in this deeper trough feature that's going to sit here. So we're going to see chances for scattered showers in that trough all around the Great Lakes and the Great Lakes states. And as the front sags, this is by next Thursday, we're going to watch for heavier rainfall in this area, including another shot here for North Carolina, which does desperately need it. So that gets us out about a week. All right, We just play into next Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, a lot of this is kind of speculative at this point, this front sweeping through here. But uh, we do notice that the pattern still looks the same as we thought it would based on the models here. The trough is back farther west. There's your flow. And as long as this ridge stays in place here, that's what we're going to continue to see. Cooler air in this place, you know, in these places, excuse me, across much of the United States. And the new run, if I just take it all the way out to 15 days, you notice we're not seeing too much of a pattern break as we get all the way to the 26th, uh, 27th of August. So that cooler air coming in this weekend, I thought I'd show you something neat. One of our fun things to do here is there's a model run by NOAA called High Split. It gives you trajectories. I tell you what, I'll link it in the description so you can play around if you want to. But some of the cooler air coming into um, you know, the northeast this weekend uh, has its origins in the Arctic on the Canadian archipelago. So cooler, drier air coming in. And I thought we'd just go take a look at those temperatures. We're still scorched in the, you know, the western plains, excuse me, the, the Midwest uh, and the western corn belt here eventually into the, the plains of, of Montana today. But look at these temperatures on Saturday getting into Sunday. That split still stays almost right on the Mississippi River. But it's the change happening after Sunday we're watching most carefully. So here's Monday into Tuesday when the ridge rebuilds in the west. There goes the heat. There's Wednesday and Thursday. Widespread area of cooler weather here across much of the United States while the heat really goes into the Pacific Northwest. And how long is it going to stick around there? Well, here's that five-day sliding window. I'll take you all the way out there to day five through ten. We'll park it there. This would, of course, end on the, this would be the uh, 17th to the 22nd. And then as we play out there into that third week of August and beyond, we really don't see any indications in the model of a big central U.S. ridge rebuilding. And that would be typical of La Nina to put one back over this area. But uh, right now it seems to leave it in the northwest. So a lot of days here of 5 to 15 degrees above normal. Uh, so it's going to be quite hot. And that's going to really increase that wildfire threat. So just to piggyback on last night's video, as we finish this up, I do want to show you the latest 10-day uh, outlook for Europe. So we are shifting things up a bit, putting more heat over here in the Russian wheat belt, although still staying above average for much of Central Europe. We'll take a look at the temperature, or excuse me, the precipitation pattern. The heat wave that's coming into Russia is going to be quite hot and quite dry, but better storms in western Ukraine, parts of Germany and Poland, and then France. Desperately needed rainfall coming through France. Uh, these rains are not drought busting, but uh, they're at least there uh, to, to, to really improve maybe some of the local uh, areas. And lastly, I want to take you to China really quickly here. We see that the European model over the next 10 days is delivering quite a bit heavy rainfall uh, just north and, and west of Beijing. And this is a pretty um, agriculturally dense area here. But the models have continued to put drier conditions farther to the south. And this is something we, we really got to be paying attention to. Now, I know a lot of folks that watch this are in the Midwest and, and, and uh, they're corn and soybean farmers, but uh, I just want to show you where we grow corn and soybean so you can see this map in relation to it. So some heavier rain here, you know, that would be in through this particular area. But it's drier down here where about 20% of the corn and soybean crop is grown. And what's interesting is down farther to the south, they grow a lot of, a lot of rice is grown down here, for example. And uh, that has been where we've struggle the most with moisture. So the root zone soy moisture maps show that it's been most of south central southeastern China that's been driest uh, this this particular growing season. So I'll just keep watching and I'll talk to you again on Monday. Have a good rest of your weekend. Thanks.